the biggest cyber attack in history wreaks havoc on internet exchange points, this time on ThreatWire. Hello and welcome to ThreatWire. My name is Darren Kitchen. My co-host Shannon Morris is out this week, so filling in here is Greg. He doesn't he look glamorous? And this is your summary of what's threatening security privacy and our beloved internet freedom. And so this week there's so much going on in the realm of privacy and cybersecurity, but I'd like to take a look at one thing on your mind that's buzzing on our Google Plus community, no weird pun intended there, which reads, biggest cyber attack in history. Cyberbunker. They are a Dutch web host company known for their tolerance for basically anything that isn't terrorism or child pornography has come under fire from the Spam House project. So Cyberbunker, they're named after a Netherlands nuclear war bunker in which they actually reside, has had a controversial history. Previously, they've hosted the Russian Business Network, which is a cybercrime organization, allegedly operator of the, uh, the Storm Botnet, and also the Pirate Bay, who should need no introduction. Spam House, on the other end, is a non-government organization based in London and Geneva, and they operate several blacklists, which they offer to service providers to help them thwart spam. Nobody likes spam, right? This month, Spam House added Cyberbunker to its blacklist, and shortly thereafter, suffered a massive distributed denial of service attack, or a DDoS. The attack, which basically overwhelms the server by saturating its connection or eating up all of its resources, is being called the biggest in history, peaking at three 300 gigabits per second. That's gigabits. That's three times larger than the previous record holder for a DDoS attack. Now this attack exploits a known vulnerability in the spam house DNS servers. And at the time of recording, the attack has lasted over a week. And though spam house is the target, it's not without casualties. Internet exchange points or IXPs have actually suffered a blow in this attack. The London Internet Exchange or Lynx suffered a substantial outage on the 23rd with its internet traffic at a peak time I'm dropping from 1.5 terabits per second to about half of that. The network operator recovered after the operators, of course, made configuration changes to handle the load. Now, IXPs, if you're not familiar, those are basically what connects tier one and tier two networks. Tier one being the networks of, uh, say, a dozen different major backbones, which peer with each other to share data at no cost to one another, while tier two networks are those who, basically the internet service providers, who purchase large volumes of bandwidth and then sell them downstream to other providers, in this case, Cyberbunker and Spam house. So what's interesting here is the technique used in the DDoS attack. It's actually called DNS amplification. It's been known for quite a while and this is one where a single DNS query packet can be sent to an open DNS server with the victim's IP address as a spoofed origin which results in the victim actually receiving an order of magnitude more packets in response. Now Cyberbunker claims that it is currently engaged in a blackmail war with Spam House and at the time of the recording their site is offline. It's going to be interesting to see how this one shakes up because I don't see Spam House backing out on their decision of the blacklist, so stay tuned for that. Now, last week we asked you how you feel about the fight for privacy, whether it's legislation versus practical encryption, with there being you know, no technological reason why every message couldn't be encrypted, even those kitten photos encrypt all the things, right? But, but seriously, uh, security isn't exactly convenient, and yet while many are appalled by the privacy intrusions of governments here and abroad, one may ask, is the solution on Capitol Hill or is it in your hands? And our comment of the week comes from Malkut Safir, who writes, the solution must come from both sides, encryption and legislation. Now, he says he watches Hack 5 and can follow 10% of what we're talking about. Compare that to his father. He says, I ask him what browser he uses, and he says, the one that comes with the computer. Now, what chance does he have? He's smart, he was just educated in the age of slide rules. Now, putting one's onus on the individual lets the governments off the hook. You need to get a warrant to open a letter. So how is reading an email gonna be any different under the law? Well, to answer your question, I'm gonna say, because it's on a computer. Ooh, and insert a rant about CFAA or the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act here because, oh my God, it's a computer and suddenly everything is different, right? Well, this week, what I'd like to know is your take on dealing with a DOS attack. Security researcher Dan Kaminsky is quoted as having said, quote, you cannot stop a DNS flood by shutting down those servers because those machines have to be open and public by default. 
the only way to deal with this problem is to find the people that are doing it and arrest them. So, do you agree? Let us know in the comments. And also remember that you can find all of the ways to subscribe and get involved in the show at threatwire.org. You can find the Google Plus community there, and that's where the conversation goes on all week. And with all of that, I'm Darren Kitchen, and with Greg and for Shannon Morse, we'll see you on the internet. Thank you.